Welcome back everyone to another update. And that is exactly what we will add today. Updates. More specifically, the method update. We will add more onto our game loop, so don't go anywhere. Maybe grab a drink and we will get started. But before we do, take a moment to subscribe and like the video. We're closing in on that 1k mark and it would be awesome to hit. And if you wish to support me, you can find a link in the description below. Now, let's get this episode going. But as usual, let's do a quick recap about the last episode. And the last episode was about animations. First we talked about how they work and how we will store them. Then we drew our first animation. Then we imported entire sprite atlas and put them in that array. And to draw the second animation, we used a two-dimensional array for the first time. It's just a fancy name for an array inside an array. And with this new array, we can access all sprites of the sprite atlas. Therefore, we got all animations ready to be used. And with the new constant class and some constant values, we managed to switch between them easily with our inputs. And the way we switch between animations is not complete. There are some changes that need to be made, but that will come when we create the player class. However, the general idea how it's going to work is there. And that is pretty much our last episode in short. Animations sure bring more life into the game. Before we start, what is UPS and what's the difference between UPS and FPS? The difference is that one takes care of the rendering of everything. The level, the player, the enemies and so on. If it needs to be shown on the screen, the render part takes care of that. The other one, updates, also called tick sometimes, is taking care of all the logic in the game. Do you want to move the player? The update method makes sure that the new position is updated. Is there any events going on? The update method checks for changes and applies it, and so on. There are a few reasons why you wish to separate the two. One being it's much easier to read the code and find what you're looking for. The other one is that while the logic needs to run as smooth as possible, we could sacrifice a few frames in case the game or system encounters some lag. What would happen if the frame rate drops is it just looks frozen for a short period of time. And if we separate the two, we can set different FPS rates depending on the system and also what kind of monitors we're using. If the system is bad, we can allow the player to set a lower FPS and therefore make it cheaper to run in terms of processing power. And if you have a very good computer, the player can enjoy crisp gameplay with max FPS. But when it comes to the UPS, we want to keep a constant speed. No matter how good the computer is, if I set 100 updates per second as default, it should run at 100 UPS on my computer as well as yours. Otherwise the game would run faster for some and slower for others. And in case there is lag, make sure you assume it will lag at some point. Computers are not perfect. We can then catch up for the lost time. So that will be interesting to build today. Let's get going. All right, let's begin. The first we will need is a global variable to set the updates per second, just like the frames per second. So private final int ups underscore set equal, say 200 for now. We can change it later, but we just need a value. Then we can head down to our game loop. We will spend most of our time here today. And just like the time per frame, we need one for time per update. Double time per update. And we can just copy so we don't mess it up and then change FPS to UPS underscore set. And time per update, which is not the time an update or frame should take, it's just the time in between them, the time of the frequency in other words. I will not touch the code for the render part for now, just so we can see the difference between the two for a while. We will however change the render section as well, but that will be the last part of the video. Then we will need a new long variable that will be just like the now one and we will replace both now and last frame later but uh, we need a long now called long previous time equals system dot nano time. Then we also need a way to check the updates per second later when we print it out so we need a updates just like the frames and set it to zero. Nothing new. Now, here's the new part, which we will be using in order for us to catch up if there's lag. I will take the current render section here as an example. I will try to use graphics and explain it as well as I can. There's a little bit math in it, but I'm sure you can handle it. You can do it. When we update here, we check the current time 
we enter this iteration and store that time in the now variable. And then we take that time and subtract the last time we drew a frame and check whether the result, well, is more or equal to time per frame, meaning it's now time to draw again. More or equal that time have now passed. If it's false, we just ignore it and try again the next iteration. However, if it's true, then we repaint, then we store the time for the last frame as now, since we just redrew the game and increase the frames by one. If we take a look at the now minus last frame part, we not only check if it's equal, but also if it's more than equal. And whatever duration is more than that time per frame is lost to us. And that time difference will add up over time and will result in a loss of frames per second. So for example, if we wanna redraw the surface every 10 millisecond, and now that result is 11 millisecond, that one millisecond is now lost. And each time we lose a little bit of time since it will never be exactly the same time as time per frame. So we need a smart way of using this lost time into the game loop. So let's code it out and see how it works. We will start by adding a new variable called delta u for delta time, but for update. So delta u is a good name. So double delta u equals zero. Then we can enter the actual loop. And let's just put now at the top. And then we add another variable, a long, that will be named current time equals system dot nano time. We will remove now later, but this is just to keep them separate because we want to see the difference between the render and the way we do updates. And the way we will check if it's time to update the game is to check if delta u is more or equal to one. And the way we get delta u increased is to take minus previous time, the long we added at the start at the top, and then divide the result of that with time per update. And this will happen every iteration. So delta u plus equals and some parentheses, we take current time minus previous time and divide it by time per update. And this delta u will reach one or more when the time since the last time we updated the game is more or equal to the time per update. So let's code it out so it's easier to see. So if delta u is more or equal than one, we update the game. So we say, uh, we don't have it, but update. Then we say updates plus plus and delta u minus minus. So we remove one. And as you can see, if delta u is 1.1, meaning it's time to update, we just remove one and now we have delta u equals 0.1 for the next, next iteration. That time we usually waste is now stored in delta u and will be used for the next update to come just a little bit sooner so we don't lose any time. The way we check if it's time to update is almost the same as the render part but here the reminder of the check is saved since we never reset delta u. We can see it like every iteration we gain a certain percent of the total duration between the updates and we add that to delta u. So you could consider when delta u is more than one, it's actually more than 100% when we update. And once we've done an update, we remove one or 100%. So whatever change is left will be carried over to the next update, so we waste no time. But we need to set the previous time to now, otherwise this won't work. Just like we do inside our render, we say last frame equals now. We do need to do the same here, but previous time is equal to current time. And then we can test it. So in our FPS check, we just add plus, that and one of those UPS plus updates. And we say updates equals zero. And that should work. So let's bring console up a little bit and then try it. All right, so we have a stable 200 frames per second, but we did have a frame drop there, just a little one. Let's uh, exit this, take a look. So the first one don't, doesn't count. Then we have stable, stable, stable. But here we actually have a frame drop. 
even though there was no lag. And that's the reason of that, you know, we lose a little bit of time every time we, when we render. So that's most likely the reason behind it. So yeah, this is the superior way of doing it and we will change our render as well. So let's do that. And we will do it exactly the same. So let's just add the variables that differ. So double delta f for frame, so delta f equals zero. And here we say delta f plus equal, and uh, we can actually copy all of this. And instead of time per update, it's time per frame. And instead of this one, we say if delta f is more equal than one, then we update or render. So game, let's just copy this, I'm lazy. Like so. And uh, now we can remove now. We can remove now and last frame. So we only have previous time, da, 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 last check, we're keeping that because that has to do with uh, this one. So that's okay. But we don't wanna say last frame equals now. We wanna say delta F minus minus. But let's keep them on the same place. So move that one below. So we have identical like so. And I think that is all. So let's give it another try and see if it works. 120, 120, 120. Yeah, it appears to be working better. We have no frame drop just yet. It could still happen in both directions, but very rarely. This is much more stable, of course. And you need to remember I'm actually recording as of now as well. So yeah, it's working perfectly. And the last part of this episode is to just remove that. We don't need it but we need to create this update. Otherwise, why add an update and no, well, update? So we add a public void update. And this is where everything goes. Like if you want to update the player, we say player.update. If you want to update the level, level.update and so on. But right now, all we have is game panel. So we're gonna say game panel dot update. I would call it update, but we do already have a update method and I don't want to confuse them. That's inside J component class. So yeah, we're not going to call it update. We can just call it update game for simplicity. So we know what it does. And then inside our game panel, right above pink component, we say public void update game. And everything that has to do with logic, so the animation tick, the set animation, and also update the position will remove from paint to the update game. And let's give it a last check if it works. So we still have the player moving, and if you have still have 200 updates per second, he will move a little bit faster because before it was 120, now it's 200. So yeah, and we can still move him around. Beautiful. And that is pretty much it folks. Our game loop is much more solid now and will run smoother as a result. If you made it this far in the video, good job, you deserve it. I also want to thank you for watching and I hope that you join me for the next one as well. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and also there's a link in the description below if you wish to support my work. Until the next update, take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.